I wanted to turn the tables and beat Pokemon Violet with Hardcore Nuzlocke rules, of course, using only humans. Okay, so maybe we can't actually use humans, but I'm using the next best thing, human-like Pokemon. Basically, any Pokemon that's in the human-like egg group is fair game and can be used. We start the game, we get dressed for school, and we head outside to start our adventure. Director Clavel does try to palm off some Pokemon to us, but we ain't interested in any of them. The director, on the other hand, um, Tic Tac, did you just try to catch me with a Pokeball? What? No, you're just crazy, old man. So unfortunately, after a few failed attempts to catch some humans, we finally come across a usable Pokemon, Routes. We name our new friend Zelda and... Ugh, really? Adamant Nature? Yeah, you're kind of trash right now. Sorry, Zelda. Thankfully, nature mints are a thing, and we can fix this at some point. For now, I spend my time slaughtering every single Psyduck in Paldea to get those sweet special attack EVs they give. Um, kid, you're just casually sculling a, a coffee, huh? Well, that's not my problem. Nimona meets us at the gates, and I thought we were going to battle, but it turns out that Zelda just starts kissing her Pokemon until they pass out. Not a bad way to die, I guess. Want to chug some tea? Ch -ch -ch chug my man, you're going to need to brush up on your flirting skills. Did you know? Well, of course I did. That's right. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And yes, you know I'm being serious when I bring out the face cam. I get it. You're skeptical. How can a game with graphics this good have millions of players worldwide and be a completely free to play experience? Well, it just is. Personally, my favorite thing to do in Raid is to collect different champions in the game, which then allows me to build certain teams and tactics to take on the dungeons. Now, don't get me wrong, it ain't gonna be easy. But when you do combine the right champion and tactics, satisfying. And with over 700 unique champions you can collect, the tactics and combinations are endless. Okay, let me quickly just show you some of my favorite champions. First up, we have Virgus. There's just something about the gold and blue design that made me want this guy. And at the moment, he's my best defensive champion. Next, we have Astralon. And I mean, just look at this guy. Dual swords, red wings. And finally, let me introduce you to Sir Nicholas. I don't know why, but there's something about having Santa Claus fight for your cause that resonates with me. Oh, and did I mention that this April, Raider's gonna have an egg hunt. And by egg hunt, I mean dragon eggs. Just be sure to download Raid Shadow Legends using the links below, copy your in-game player ID, and then head over here between April 14th and May 15th. Search the dragon's lair using your phone, and if you find hidden eggs, you'll have a chance to win amazing in-game items, and even real life prizes. This ranges from a legendary raid champion all the way to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. And existing players don't have to worry, we have you covered. Go to this link and you'll find a special promo code that everyone can use to earn a small gift in game. And to top it off, any new players that use my link or scan the QR code right here, they get a free starter pack with energy refills, magic potions, and even an epic champion, Kellen the Shrike. Once you're in, come find me under the name Michael Tic Tac and make sure you join my clan so we can crush it together. Big thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video and please don't forget to click the link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. We make our way to Mesa Goza, beat up some Team Star Grunts and then introduce ourselves to our classmates. Could I trouble you for a few words introducing yourself? Sure, I'm Tic Tac. Did you hear that? He sounds super friendly and fun. Um, really? You got all of that from my name, huh? Th th this is a fruit, right? Uh, have we enrolled at a preschool or something? So my first goal is to head to Contondo City and take out the first gym leader, Katie. Perfect weather for olive crop. Listen, I'm not exactly a farmer, but I'm pretty sure that this rain isn't good for olives. Now, I could try and take on Katie, but I'm not about to risk Zelda just yet. So we go on a short hunt and find ourselves a Charcadet. And this evolves into one of my favorite Pokemon, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Even with Dark Samus, I'm not completely confident, so I make some more preparations and we go on a bit of an adventure. Yep, Flamethrower. Is this overkill? Yes. Do I care? No. Do Kate and her bug Pokemon all die to terrestrialized Flamethrowers from Dark Samus? Absolutely. 
Although the Contondo Gym was a breeze, next up we have the Stony Cliff Titan Claw to deal with. And let's just say, my team ain't exactly built to take on a giant rock crab. Thankfully, on the way there, we run into this thick boy, who we can catch and add to the team. But he ain't quite ready just yet, so we scale our nearby tower and find the TM for Drain Punch and teach it to Thick Boy. Clawf is then tracked down and then just pummeled by Drain Punches. Yeah, you celebrate that victory, Thick Boy. It's time to take on Brassius, so we head to Artisan City. This is where he said to meet up, right? Yeah, I think he flaked on you, lady. Sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, if you're still watching the video and you're enjoying it, maybe give it a like. Also, if this is like your third or fourth video that you've watched of mine, uh, maybe even subscribe. That'd be cool. Um, all right, let's get back to the video. We enter the gym, watch Brassius jump off a windmill, and then start burning through his Pokemon. Like the bug gym, we can just... Wait, he survives? Okay, lucky for us, Brassius doesn't know basic Pokemon type weaknesses and goes for a Trial Blaze instead. However, it has its speed risen, so I decide to play it safe, bringing in Thick Boy to clean up the mess for us. Right, I'm just gonna say it, Bombardier is a problem. Thick Boy would get destroyed by Plucks, Dark Samus gets destroyed by Rock Throws, and Zelda, well, well yeah, she dies to, to everything at the moment. So the plan is to bolster our team, and we start by adding a Sableye. Then with Heartless, I use them to start beating up Sinisties to grab these precious Sinistee chips. Once we gather 10 of them, this lovely gentleman trades them for a set of malicious armor, which means Dark Samus can evolve into her final form. Yeah, this design is off the charts. Like, how can you not like this Pokemon? The problem is that even with Heartless and Dark Samus evolved, we still aren't ready for this stupid giant bird. But there is still hope, and by hope, I mean Riolu. Well, technically it's the Lucario that evolves from the Riolu, but you all know what I mean. We scout to the top of the mountain, and Vegeta is ready to have some fun. Yeah, now I actually made a mistake I, uh, as I terrestrialized Vegeta, losing his still typing, making him weak to flying moves. Also, did I mention that we can't heal between the two battles? In the second phase, I just switch it Heartless. Uh, well, because I don't actually care if he dies. Um... Turns out that I'm the Heartless one, huh? Thankfully, Heartless and Nackley combined well with a Power Gem, followed by a Smackdown to put an end to the Titan. You did good, Heartless. You did good. Now we head to the first Team Star base to take out their boss, Giacomo. Ja Giacomo? You know what, let's just call him DJ Vice. Oh, and for those who care, Zelda evolved into a Curlia. Fighting is good against Dark, so I lead with Thick Boy and... Um, okay, that hurt. Drain Punch does Oko the Pornard, but our little sumo is hurt badly. So Vegeta comes in, lends a few aura spheres on the star mobile, and, and well, it just falls apart. Yeah, you ain't fooling anyone, Lewis. I've seen 21 Jump Street, buddy. Also, would it kill you to put on some pants? We head to Lavencia City, as that's where Iono's gym is located, but of course, Nimona ain't letting us pass without a battle with her first. So Thick Boy just takes out her Rock Ruff and Pour Me with relative ease before Heartless comes in to eliminate her terrestrialized duck. Yeah, it was that easy. Thick Boy also evolves into a Hariyama, and now we have some serious thickness in the squad. You know what? I want to become real strong just like Missy Nimona is. Well, let me help you with that quickly. There you go, kid. Losing to me just like Nimona. Anyway, enough sidetracking. Let's take on Iono. Thick Boy takes a lead and just starts bulking up on her Wattrill. Her plucks do less and less damage as her defenses go up, and Leftovers keeps us healthy enough to get to plus 6 in attack and defense. Now Thick Boy can start drain punching his way through Iono's team, starting with a Wattrill. Belly Bolt comes in, but his thickness pales in comparison to Thick Boy and simply falls to a single punch. Yeah, and Luxio comes in just to die as well. Her Miss Magius would have been an issue, but it terrestrializes meaning a Drain Punch can now hit the Ghost, and, well, it, it, it just dies. The Team Star Firebase is next up to deal with, so we head in there and show no mercy to the Grunts and their Pokemon. Mela comes out screaming, but we ain't intimidated. Also, it seems that Arceus was looking down on us as it was raining, not allowing Torkoal to activate Drought and weakening her Fire-type moves. Thick Boy starts bulking up on the Torkoal, and, of course, when I want to get burnt because of a thing called Guts, we don't. And then it doesn't matter, as we can set up a couple of times and then take out the talker with drain punches. Her car is next in, and this sucker does burn us, meaning we get powered up from guts, but either way it was going down, thanks to some more drain punches from Thick Boy. You got what you came for, now leave me alone. Sheesh! 
Someone's a sore loser, hey? The Lurking Sword Titan Orthwim is next up, and well, we just flamethrower this thing to death with Dark Samus. I don't even bother healing between the two phases, I just straight up melt this poor worm into a puddle. Dark Samus, no, 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 don't dab. That's embarrassing. Now we do have Kofu and his water Pokemon coming up, but before that, I head to the desert to catch ourselves a Cacnea. With our freshly caught cactus, we make our way to Cascarafa, only to be told that Kofu is no longer there. We track down the jolly fella, and he agrees to battle us. But before that, we get a big evolution. That's right, Zelda becomes a Gardevoir. However, even with this evolution, Zelda's not quite ready. I jump on my ride on, and we go on another adventure, but this time we head to the snowy regions. That's because right under this tree, we can find ourselves a modest mint. Yep, we can finally get rid of that trash, adamant nature. Zelda then learns how to summon thunderbolts from the sky, and goes on a rampage, killing the loser. Well, Trio does outspeed and land a headbutt, but we follow up with a big thunderbolt taking it out. I decide to drain and kiss the Crabobinal, lucky thing, to deal damage and get some health back. The kiss pays off as we just survive a crab hammer, allowing one last thunderbolt from Zelda to zap this thing straight back to Kofu. It's time to face off against the Poison Team Star crew, but before I take on Atticus, we can get another encounter, Drowsy. Not sure if I'm gonna use this thing, but there's no harm in having a cheerleader, right? Right after that, Scarecrow levels up enough, allowing him to evolve into a Cacturn. Although he is kind of useless for this next fight. Atticus comes out in his giant car, dressed as a ninja, which is a Koga reference, I'm guessing, and we start the fight. Vegeta is immune to poison, so naturally he takes a lead and starts calm minding. Oh, and fun fact, Sucker Punch is the only move that Skuntake has that can hurt Vegeta. And by calm mining, that move will never hit. So yeah, as you can imagine, we just set up on the skunk and everything dies. Well, except the Starmobile. This thing actually eats plus six auras feels really well. It doesn't matter though, because Dark Samus can tag in and finish off the job for us anyway. Medali City is our next stop, and everyone's favorite guy, Larry, is waiting for us. I do feel a little bad. I mean, we're interrupting his lunch break for a gym battle, but he doesn't seem to mind. Vegeta is a star of the show once again, and he starts calm mining on Larry's koala. We do get yawned, but we resist the incoming slams, and we recover enough health through leftovers to stay healthy. Eventually, we wake up, and I hit the Kamala with a trial blaze, which won't kill it, but it will make me faster. On the next one, I go for an Aura Sphere, and I take it out. And it's actually just all downhill for Larry here, as Vegeta is powered up enough and can outspeed and Oko the rest of his Pokemon, including his Terrestrialized Staraptor. Vegeta ain't done just yet, as Nomona challenges us to another battle, but without the chance to adjust our team. Who am I kidding? I was always wanting to lead with Vegeta here anyway, who can just set up on a Lycan Rock and then just start Aura Sphering his way through her entire Pokemon team. Yep, Lucario is a strong Pokemon. Who would have guessed that, huh? Next up is the Montanovera Gym Leader Rhyme, who is out in the snow. But now's a good time to do some extra training, as we're a little underleveled, allowing Drowsy to become a Hypno. Yeah, I'm still not gonna use you, buddy. Well, unless Zelda dies, but we don't really want that. We finally reach Montanovera City, and we can start the battle with Rhyme. I Tressalize Dark Samus to lose a ghost weakness, and between her, Scarecrow, and the free set increases we get from the crowd, we take out all her Pokemon with Sucker Punches and Shadow Claws. Honestly, this could have been a much harder fight, but the crowd giving us stat boost basically makes us free. Also, can we just appreciate this little fella jamming on the speaker? You go, boy. Feeling a little cold after being in the snow, we head to the desert to warm up. Conveniently, the next Titan Pokemon, this robot looking um, Don Fan thing that rolls around like Sonic the Hedgehog, is also here. Thick Boy isn't impressed with this robot, and some back to back drain punches forces it to flee. But we ain't about to let it get away that easily, so we track it down again and repeat the process with Thick Boy. Arvin Scovillian does pitch in also, but we really didn't need his help to be honest. We grab the herbs, feed my Pokemon, and my boss if he's feeling better. Also, we're flying now. Now we do have Tulip to take on next. Well, it's technically Nomono that will ambush us first. But before either of them, we can grab another encounter. I have the choice between Medichan and Toxtricity, and we'll already have Psychic and Fighting types on my team covered, so we get the Punk Rocker. Was an easy choice to be fair. I'm helping. 
Helping with what exactly? We enter the gym, talk to Namona, and we start the battle. And well, this battle goes exactly like the last one, with Vegeta sweeping her entire squad. Sand attacks from Lycan Rock could have been an issue, but Aura Sphere can never miss, so we could not lose this fight. Also, I'm pretty sure she has a crush on me, although who can blame her really? Anyway, now we can finally face the next gym leader, Tulip. Hee <laughs> hee, I must say that you're a cute challenger, Tic Tac. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if that's an appropriate thing to say to a 12-year-old boy, uh, Tulip. Scarecrow can leech to the Farigaraf and start setting up with growths while Spike is shielding between turns before her giraffe eventually is drained to death. The rest of her team stands no chance as Scarecrow continues to sucker punch every single one of her psychic Pokemon, outspeeding and one-shotting them. Yep, another easy win for us. We ain't quite done with the gym leaders just yet, as there's one more guy we need to defeat. Back to the snow we go, and this time it's Grusher, who I'm gonna crush her. Yeah, okay, that was a horrible joke. Sorry. Dark Samus is actually perfect for this fight, as you can set up with a couple of sword stances, while the Frostmoth goes for a Tailwind and a Blizzard. To avoid being outsped by the Pokemon due to Tailwind, we go for a Flame Charge, which is four times effective against the Frostmoth, and it also boosts our speed. The rest of his Pokemon then gets sliced up by some super effective Bitter Blades, including the Tressly Zaltaria, who makes my job easier by becoming an Ice type. With every gym badge in my possession, we can technically head straight to the Pokemon League and take out the Elite Four members and defeat the champion, but we do have some loose ends to deal with, starting with the Fairy Team Star Base and their leader, Ortega. And now's the perfect time to introduce you all to Paramore, the Toxtricity. Right off the bat, she boom burst the Azumarill, completely obliterating it in a single hit, although we do get lucky with a crit. Oh, and we have the ability Punk Rock, so our sound based moves are increased by 30%. Add the fact that she's also holding a throat spray, raising her special attack after using a sound based move, things get messy real quick for the Fairy Boy. Wigglytuff is next in, but it ain't surviving a boom burst from Paramore. Dashpunt actually outspeeds and lands a mud slap, which is annoying as it does lower my accuracy. Oopsie, did you just realize how unmatched you are? If you want to give up, now's the time. Um, yeah, I'm shaking in my boots. Please, please Ortega, show me mercy. The lowered accuracy does come back to haunt me as we miss the final blow on the Starmobile, but it's nothing Dark Samus can't handle, so she switches in and ends a fight. Right now, there's a giant Dondonzo and a giant Tatagiri. Well, well, maybe the word giant isn't entirely accurate for the piece of sushi, but it, it's bigger than a regular one. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. There's two Pokemon that need to die so I can save my boss diff. And now that I've said it out loud, it, it does kind of sound messed up. Scarecrow is too strong for the Dondonzo, defeating it in both phases rather easily, and when the Tatsugiri comes in, it's Zelda who can moonblast this thing to oblivion. We have slayed the last Titan, and Arvin's dog is healthy again. <coughs> last but not least, we have the fighting team star base and their leader, Eerie, to defeat. We head to the base entrance, pummel through her grunts, and force Eerie to come out to face us. Now, because the Toxic Croak is desperate to land a super effective sucker punch on Dark Samus, we can basically set up to plus six in attack with Swords Dancers for free. To make sure we outspeed Aerie's team, I then go for a Flame Charge once he runs out of Sucker Punch PP, which can easily kill the frog. Lucario, Passy Man, and Annihilate then all follow suit, going down to a single hit from Dark Samus, forcing out her, her Rev of Rev of, her Starmobile. But even this hunk of junk can't take a single bit of blade from Dark Samus, meaning we have now collected all 18 gym badges in the game. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Well, well maybe that's not true, but, but we're here anyway, the Elite Four. First up, it's Rika and her ground types. So I give Scarecrow the lead. Scarecrow can outspeed and deliver a devastating energy ball to a wish cache, completely ending its life. As expected, her fire type camera up comes in so I counter by bringing in Thick Boy to drain punch the camel straight back to Rika. The rest of her team is then easily handled by Scarecrow, who can take them all out with spiky shields and energy balls. Next up is Poppy and a steel Pokemon, but this is light work for Dark Samus, who can sit up on a Copperaja with sword stances and then start bitter blading her way through Poppy's team. Each and every one of them dies to a single hit. Well, well technically Magnezone had sturdy and it took two hits, but the rest of her team gets sliced up 
up with our flaming blades. Fan favorite Larry is back, and this time he has a team of flying Pokemon. Paramore leads, and a boom boost does decent damage on the Tropius, but more importantly, it boosts my special attack thanks to the throat spray. And well, from here, boom bursts and overdrives from Paramore completely overpower Larry's team of birds, including his terrestrialized flamingo. The last member of the Elite Four is Hassel and his dragons, and Vegeta is keen to have some fun. Vegeta can set up with a couple of Calm Minds on his Noivern before going for a Trial Blaze. Pathetic damage, I know, but we just did it to get the speed boost. Now we can start Dragon Pulsing everything in sight, wreaking havoc on Hassel's dragons. Also, Dragon Pulses kind of look like a Gallic gun, which is actually perfect for Vegeta. And finally, we head outside to take on the champion herself, Gita. She leads with her Spartha, and I bring in Dark Samus. Illumina Crash does decent damage to us, but we go for a Swords Dance, doubling our attack. Espartha then goes for a Reflect, which is good as I actually misclicked as I went for another Swords Dance by mistake. She then goes for a second Lumina Crash, and we barely hold on. Really? Dark Summer's about to cry? Yeah, I highly doubt that game. We then respawn with a big Shadow Claw, taking it out. And, well, from here... Yeah, just watch. <laughs> We are now crowned as a champion rake trainer in Paldia, but we ain't done just yet. Ivan lets us into the lighthouse, only to find out that his dad, who looks like a Giga Chad by the way, is trapped in Area Zero. I'm keen to save the guy, but Ivan wants to test our strength in a battle first. Really? I've been carrying you in every Titan fight, but you want to test me, huh? Thick Boy gets even thicker, if that's even possible, by bulking up on his Greedent a few times. Then he punishes the Squirrel with a huge Drain Punch, taking it out and healing us up. Scovillian comes in, and Thick Boy also shows us how nimble he is by dodging a big Fire Blast and then crushing the plant with a Drain Punch. The rest of Ivan's team is then handled easily by Thick Boy as he just punches everything in sight. Yeah. Really not sure why you wanted to test my strength, buddy. Next up, we have to face off against Clive. No, wait, it's Professor Clavel. Okay, well, now he's apparently Cassiopeia. Dude, can you just please make up your mind? Zelda starts for us, and she can set up with a calm mind while his Orangaroo makes us drowsy with a yawn. We get a little greedy, going for one more calm mind, and then they must have predicted a switch as it goes for a second yawn for some reason. Zelda does go to sleep, but we did prepare for this, giving her a Chester Berry to eat, waking us up. Now it's time to attack, and we start by Moonblasting the Rangaroo, which I don't think the crit mattered, to be honest. Poltegus is next in, and well, we ain't thirsty, so this thing gets Moonblasted. Among Us resists Fairy, so we go for a Psychic instead, destroying the Mushroom. A Bombasso does make it start snowing, but that ain't saving him from a Moonblast. Gyarados suffers the same fate, dying to a Moonblast from Zelda. Finally, it's the Crocodile, but we go back to using a Psychic, which is enough to get the win. It turns out that Director Clavel isn't Cassiopeia, which, let's be honest, doesn't surprise anyone. We head to the courtyard, and, well, it ends up being Penny. Shocker. This ends up being another Zelda sweep, as we set up on our Umbreon with Calm Minds, and just start one-shotting all our EV evolutions that come out. Jolteon does outspeed, but our special defense is so high that our thunder tickles us. The rest of them do get outsped, and they fall to the power of Zelda. Before we can save the Professor, we have to deal with Nimona for the last time in the game. And just like the previous two fights, Vegeta just does everything on his own. This time I do have him terrestrialized before we set up in the Lycan Rock, as it knows Drill Run, which could hurt, but once terrestrialized, we can easily set up with Calm Minds and plow through her team. We Tri-Blades the Lycan Rock first, as we want to outspeed the rest of the team, before always fearing the dog for the last time. I mean, there isn't really much more to say about this fight, as now we're faster and stronger than her entire team. Although, I don't think anyone is really surprised about this outcome. Okay, well maybe Nimona is. Gonna cry. Now that we've closed the chapters of the three main quests, we can now head towards Area Zero to start the final chapter, The Way Home. Okay, why the heck are you sitting at the front? This is my Maraud on Arvin, not yours. Wait, you seriously about to jump down before I even get on? Talk about rude. Thankfully, we get on just in time, and we can safely land to the bottom of Area Zero. 
We go deeper and deeper, activating switches along the way, until finally we reach the professor's lab. We open up the lab, and a bunch of Paradox Pokemon escape, which could be bad if they make it to the surface. But I came here to take on the professor, so... See ya losers. Professor Turo wakes up from his slumber and then tells us about how the real professor has died in an explosion and he's just an AI robot. Listen dude, you should be telling this to Arvin, not me. We get down to the bottom floor where the time machine is and okay, what was the budget allocation for this room? This place looks expensive. If you place the violet book upon the pedestal here, you'll be able to stop the time machine. There is just one issue. If you try to stop the time machine, I will most likely attack you. Artificial being that I am, my own desires can be overridden by the system's programming. Well, okay, well then here's a thought. Why don't you wait back upstairs while I deactivate the time machine down here? Too late, he's gone mad. Side note, I decided not to use setup moves in this fight just to make it a bit more challenging. Thick Boy takes a lead, eating a fiery dance from the Iron Moth, but we hit back with a huge stomping tantrum, taking it out. Iron Bundle is next in, and expecting a drill pack, I switch in Paramore, and it ends up going for Snowscape. And then for some unknown reason, it goes for another Snowscape? Y yeah, I don't know why. But it's good for us, as Paramore can overdrive it to its death, while getting a Throat Spray special attack boost. Iron Thorns is not a good matchup, so Scarecrow comes in and eats an Earthquake like a champ. We then go for a Spiky Shield, which pays off as we're protected from a Brick Break. Thinking that I would outspeed, I go for an Energy Ball, but we are slower and we get brought down to a Slither with a Brick Break. An Energy Ball is also agonizingly close to getting the kill, but this monster survives the hit. I decide to switch in Dark Samus, as I know a Brick Break won't affect us. Um, excuse me. Why in the world did you go for an Earthquake for? Thankfully, Dark Samus does survive the hit, and we can finish it off with the Shadow Claw, but come on, that's ridiculous. Now it's Iron Jugglers, so I tag in Vegeta, taking a Dark Pulse on the switch. We land an Aura Sphere, but it's not quite enough to two-shot it, but Vegeta does get very lucky, dodging a Flamethrower out of love. We Terrestrialize on the next turn to get the extra power needed to take out the Iron Jugglers. Iron Hand comes in, going for a Fake Out, However, we have inner focus, meaning we won't flinch and we land an Aura Sphere. We follow up with one more in the next turn, and the bootleg version of Thick Boy goes down. Last is Iron Valiant, and expecting a psychic move, I switch in Zelda, who then takes huge damage from a Spirit Break. Unfortunately, there's no real safe way to keep her alive, and I need a clean switch, meaning she does go down on the next turn. Yeah, this did kind of make me sad. Paramore does come in and takes a big Psycho Cut before landing a huge Poison Jab, just short from the KO. Definitely expecting a psychic move, I do switch in Scarecrow, who is immune to the Psycho Cut, and they can do some chip damage with a spiky shield. On the following turn, I allow him to go down, but it's okay as it gives us a clean switch in for Thick Boy. Thick Boy comes in and lands a huge fake out on the Iron Valiant, finishing it off and beating the Professor. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have beaten Pokemon Violet using only human Pokemon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.